Today in Master of Crafts, purses, handbags, and backpacks from a young Ukrainian studio. Individual engravings is an important attribute of an expensive gift. How did one person's passion for quality accessories create a business with dozens of employees? UA TV has once again returned to the topic of genuine leather products, the most necessary ones this time. How much cash can one person carry on them? The inhabitants of the island of Yap in the Pacific Micronesia have long been answering this question with nothing at all. Here, round boulders with a diameter of more than human height or greater are used as an official currency. Those are usually calcite discs of various sizes with a hole in the center. The average thickness is half a meter and they weigh around 4 tons. The currency is called rai in the local language. Only a large group of people can transport one coin from one island to another by canoe, provided that it does sink from the weight. That's why most of Rai have been standing in the same place for centuries, although they did change owners quite frequently, who marked their ownership with a new sign. The nicer and older the stone is, and the more difficult it was to obtain it, the more valuable the coin. On the one hand, it's almost impossible to steal such treasure. But on the other hand, local tribes like a whole niche of material culture associated with carrying money. The concept of wallets is as alien to them as boulder-sized coins for everyone else. The vast majority of civilizations have had accessories for money for millennia. In Ukraine of the 21st century, there are craftsmen who are trying to find a new approach to producing these everyday things and making them original. We make wallets, handbags, backpacks and belts. We engrave our customers' names on the wallets. That is, people get wallets with their names laser-edged on them. It might seem like a fairly simple craft at first glance, but Miroslav Filnitsky and his craftsmen have come a long way before they could truly be proud of their products. Their main goal was to create a studio in Ukraine, which would focus on the world market of accessories and produce the longest-lasting things. Miroslav insists that he has already achieved that. Yes, yeah. If in 20, 40 or 50 years someone comes to me and tells me that I gave them a life warranty, but the wallet I made for them has a defect, believe me, I will gladly replace it. Furthermore, I will easily recognize a 10 or 30 year old wallet that I made with my own hands. Why did a promising physician decide to switch to leather working? Is it possible to make indestructible accessories out of leather? and what common story unites the making of modern wallets and handbags. Today, wallets are used to carry cash, credit cards, discount cards and photos of loved ones. But a person from the ancient world, from Egypt for example, would put coins, precious stones and even herbs into a fabric pouch. In China and Japan, they only had laces with knots on which they carry their money. It's practical, but if it tears, all the money would fall to the ground. The first accessory that truly resembles modern wallets appeared in ancient Rome. It was made out of leather and decorated with embroideries and precious stones to show the status of its owner. The principle has survived for thousands of years and is still relevant to this day. There was a time when Miroslav Filnitsky didn't think of such accessories when he was an ordinary medical student at the Uzhorod National University. The promising intern got a job as a manager at a Ukrainian branch of a foreign pharmaceuticals company. There he ended up being the youngest professional of this level. The dream of becoming a surgeon was not destined to come true, but Miroslav started making good money. However, it turns out that that was not enough for him. I always wanted something of my own. Over the eight years that I worked in the pharmaceuticals business, I had changed several companies. And here's how it always went. You come there, you build a structure, a sales department and everything else. And then you leave and you have to build that all over again. It is not your anymore and you no longer have anything to do with it. The idea of his own business was born almost by accident. Five years ago, Miroslav simply needed a good wallet. He could not shell out $1,000 for a product of an expensive brand, but didn't want to buy cheap counterfeits and Ukrainian producers didn't have anything interesting to offer at that time. The solution was self-evident. 
я тогда заинтересовался кожей, я обучал... It was then that I became interested in leather. I learned what to do from the internet, and I bought a whole set of tools to make wallets. I'll be honest here, that my first wallets were really poor quality. Either business or credit cards didn't fit in them, or something else was not right. It was just a hobby in leisure time from the main job, but the fateful year of 2014 for Ukraine gave Miroslav the impetus to go into business sailing solo. His top management experience came in handy at the right time. At some point I realized that I couldn't work for someone else. It was then that I knew that I could do this instead, that I could build a really cool Ukrainian company. Just for UATV, Miroslav Ilnitsky shows how he and his craftsmen not only make wallets and handbags themselves, but also build an original concept of long-lasting products. How it is made In medieval Europe, a simple money bag with a strap to tighten the opening served as a wallet. It could be made from a scrap of skin without any special knowledge or effort. Miroslav does not accept such minimalism in modern conditions. He recalls the first handmade wallets from Ukrainian producers. People literally took two pieces of leather, sewed them together and sold them as handmade products. In my understanding, handmade means the best possible quality. In their understanding, handmade was something cruelly thrown together. When I say that it's a handmade product, that means it's not something for the consumer market and that every item is made with passion. Miroslav taught his young craftsmen in that spirit when he began expanding production. A specialist that works here does not have to spend a certain amount of time making a set number of products. If they miss something or make a mistake, that means they make life harder for everyone else. People come here because they like working with leather. Almost 90% of my employees are people who came here with zero experience, who just wanted to work with leather. They learned everything here, from the first cut to the first stitch. Thanks to that experience, today they are creating their own models. The first condition for any model of a wallet or handbag is high-quality leather. Miroslav Studio uses Ukrainian and Italian leather for the sake of color variety. The first variety is crust. That's how genuine leather without a finish and with preservation of the natural pattern is called. They don't polish it. Instead, they simply dye it and treat it with wax to give it the water-repellent effect. The crust that we use is also used by companies that manufacture military boots. That's why I'm so confident about the quality and lifelong warranty of my wallets, because I know that I use leather that's almost impossible to wear out. Another variety is Crazy Horse, which has nothing to do with these animals. Such leather is obtained by applying refractory waxes to the surface of polished crust. It retains all the scratches and traces of bands. That is how the effect called Crazy Horse is achieved. That's the leather with the effect of aging, old-school and vintage, in other words. It wears out and collects scratches over time. That gives the effect of a kind of noble, long-lasting age. All the blanks are cut out exclusively by hand according to standardized patterns. The parameters of every part have been worked out by trial and error. Miroslav has made a lot of wallets with inconvenient pockets to achieve filigree accuracy in the end. It would seem the logical thing to do now would be stitch the blanks with a sewing machine, but the craftsmen also do this process manually using saddle stitch. Essentially, it's stitched with two needles in two opposite directions. Thanks to that, every stitch is additionally reinforced. In case one stitch is damaged in any way, it does not affect the whole scene. When manually saddle stitching, the threads don't intertwine inside the leather and return to their side, but go to the opposite side instead. The upper thread ends up on the lower surface and vice versa, so the seam does not fall apart if one of the threads is damaged. On top of that, Miroslav uses heavy-duty polyurethane threads. Despite being a millimeter thick, such thread is rated for 120 kilograms. Unlike cotton, polyurethane does not stretch or decay with time. Punching holes for these threads is a job on its own. 
For example, there are 972 holes in a large wallet. All those holes are punched by hand. After that, the wallet is put together and stitched with the polyurethane thread, and the end result is a very cool and long-lasting leather wallet. That's where we could have stopped and congratulated the craftsmen on making a good product, but Miroslav wanted to make not just wallets, but also valuable and practical gifts from the very beginning. After all, a person would rather give this accessory to someone else rather than buy one for their own personal use. That is why engraving is equally as important as the polyurethane thread. We have a special laser engraver that can leave marks on leather with the help of a laser beam. How does that work? It just burns the trail on the leather. That is another reason to use the best quality leather, because if it's thin or made of subpar materials, we would simply burn a hole in it. By Miroslav's calculations, up to 80% of orders are made by Ukrainian women. They usually ask to engrave the name of their boyfriend or husband, who will then receive it as a gift. A simple engraving becomes not just a pleasant little detail, but also shows ownership and a certain status. Just like a hundred years ago, many people today believe in the ability of wallets to attract money. The name of the owner is considered the key to success in this belief, but thinking more practically, a name accessory is more likely to be returned if it is lost. There have indeed been cases when people left feedback like thanks a lot, it's great that I bought it or was given such a wallet as a gift because the wallet was found and it had a name so its owner was contacted and it was returned. That is, it's much harder to find the owner if there are no specific documents in it. Miroslav recalls that he was once returned a wallet with business cards of potential business partners just like that. So the belief that this accessory can attract money does not exist without reason. Now, named wallets of this studio are a hybrid of a product and a service. There is almost always a stack of finished products that can be engraved at any time in case someone needs a gift urgently. We have regular customers who can call and say, Miroslav, I'm on my way to a birthday. I recall I need a gift as fast as possible. I'll be there in 20 minutes. We then put the other orders aside, throw a wallet onto the engraver and engrave it. By the time the customer arrives, he or she gets a finished wallet and goes to the birthday party with a beautiful present. Miroslav was often asked if he did anything other than wallets. It was therefore quite logical to expand the production to handbags. In Miroslav's studio, handbags and wallets are mainly made of crazy horse leather or thinner and softer leather, using standard threads. If wallets are mainly ordered by Ukrainians, handbags are ordered mostly by foreigners. Due to long shipment time, Miroslav tries not only to send finished products, but also provide atelier services. We have standard models, but then there are people who say they like everything, but would like the pocket to be the color of cognac instead of brown. That's not a problem, we can do that. And in this case, when we make an individualized accessory for someone, they are ready to wait for 20 to 30 days. These bags and backpacks are regularly sent to the United States, the UK, Austria, Australia, Singapore and even China. Today Miroslav Ilnitsky owns two workshops, one in Kiev and one in the Transcarpathian Mukachevo. He provides a total of 20 people with jobs. I buy Ukrainian leather. I invest in Ukraine. When I pay salaries to Ukrainian employees, they spend that money on food and such. But I sell abroad. Back in the time when I was dreaming of having my own business, I wanted to influence the GDP of Ukraine. In other words, always wanted to own a production facility. Miroslav can say that he has achieved his goal and even more. He founded his own unique business that opened Ukrainian products to the whole world.